Blake Shelton, I'll name the dogs on B105. It is the Northland's number one for new country, The Breakfast Club with Ken and Lauren. Friday edition, always a banger. Wow, that is you one know? way to put it. That is one way to put it. It's where we have fun. Mm-hmm. I've got a pair of pants on today that doesn't have a hole in the crotch. So, you know, I don't know if people would have um, noticed, but you did go around telling everybody yesterday, so. <laughs> hey, did you see this hole in my crotch? <laughs> Luke Combs, Ain't No Love in Oklahoma on B105, Northland's number one for new country. There's uh, been an update on the Blotnick Bridge project. We're, we're getting a better picture of what's going to happen. Okay. Um, looks like the closure of the Blotnick Bridge now expected in late 2027. Wow. And then they say the finished Briggs reconstruction is expected to take five years being done by 2032. 2032 like oh that my sounds gosh that's eight years from oh now. my gosh and then it'll <laughs> am i allowed to say it might get pushed back again well if, you know good i can't imagine it getting done sooner yeah it's not good yeah um yeah there's gonna be some field work going on too they're gonna start testing some pilings and stuff and load testing and then so you're gonna see a lot more of the stuff happening but Oh, my gosh. Maybe I should just start a ferry business. That's an idea. That would make sense. Well, think about it. Captain Ken's world famous ferry. Oh, you're going to do it. Yeah, I'm just going to quit my job and I'm going to put it all in in this ferry. And I'll just go from uh, Garfield there and I'll ferry right over to uh, Connors Point. And I think we can get it done. There's no we. I got a pontoon. I could probably. Yeah. Yeah, I could pro- That works. Yeah, you could get pontoon, pontoon rides. Doesn't go very fast, does it? Have I been on the pontoon? You've never even been to my place, have you? I've been on your boat before. My boat? Yes. When have you been on my boat? Oh, my gosh. Me, you, and our friend and his wife went on. Oh. Yeah. Ash, Josh, Bagash. Yes. Yeah, and the windiest day That was day the first ever. time we met her, and he was scared for her to meet us. Yeah, well, it's probably a good idea. I don't know. So, anyway. yes, I've been on your boat. Yeah, not the pontoon, though. Oh, the so pontoon, many boats. Very much smaller. Well, you know, you have to have the pontoon to leisurely go around. I don't know. It's different. All right. <laughs> that's right. We'll, we'll keep you updated on the Blotnick Bridge fiasco. I'm going to call that from now on. Uh, coming your way. And up ahead next, we'll look at your weather forecast on B105. B105, Northland's number one for new country. I've been looking up this ferry idea a little bit here as we've been going Okay. I'm looking at other cities' ferries because I usually I took a when I was down in Texas I took a ferry, uh, Port Aransas, uh-huh. and that was but it was free. So how am I supposed to make money on a ferry system when the Blotnick Bridge is closed if it's free service? I mean I'm gonna have that to get I some can't kind tell of, you. You know I I, I can't answer that. We'll for get you. some sponsorship uh, flags on there and stuff. Okay. Like maybe we can do the call thing, the Amsoil Ferry, or maybe you need money for this. You need. There's I need a lot of things that have to happen. A lot then. of things that have to happen. What exactly. about exactly? What's it cost for Madeline Island? Now that is a money maker. That ferry. Well, yeah, because Madeline Island ferry. You have rates. to get on the ferry to get there. Yeah. But oh my gosh, a car 19 feet, and uh, is throwing 23 dollars. I could make a killing over here at Connors Point when Blotnick Bridge closed. Well, it's going to be a tough job. You're going to have to be available 24 seven. You're going to have to... No, it'll be on my terms. Okay. <laughs> That's a, the key to a success. B105, it is a breakfast club with Ken and Lauren. And Lauren, country lowdown. So, Gary Lavox, he is back in the press because Rascal Flats have reunited. So, he was on a new podcast called Try That in a Small Town Podcast. I think we talked about that before. I think it's from the writers of Jason Aldean's song. Mm-hmm. But they were just talking to Gary Lavox. And, of course... Award shows got brought up, and the topic turned to Morgan Wallen and how he doesn't really win that many awards at these award shows. I thought he does. I mean, he's never won Entertainer of the Year, which well, is kind of controversial. He was banned from them for a year, remember that? He was banned. Yeah. But sometimes Entertainer of the Year is, it feels random because like Carrie Underwood has never won it. Garth Brooks used to win it all the time when he wasn't really doing as much as others. Like, it's just kind of random, right? Mm-hmm. So Gary Lavox was asked about this and he says, actually, I have a lot of things to say about this, but he kind of kept it classy. He said, this is how show business is. He's like, I'm going to be an honest person. He said, if you have the biggest single, you should get single of the year. If you've sold more albums than anybody, you should get album of the year. But he says, that's not how it works. He says, it's about money when it comes to these awards. And it's about um, power, and there is politics. Oh, for sure. At play. Yeah, right. Yeah, because I mean, 
Morgan should have won Entertainer one of these years because he is on a stadium tour and he's selling stadiums out and albums like crazy. I don't know if I agree with the fact that the best-selling album should win album of the year because sometimes there's like, you know, sad albums that are really good, like Carly Pierce's Divorce album. Yeah. I, I don't know if I agree with that one either, but... Yeah, but I agree with him in that Morgan should have won at this point, but... Uh, he also pointed out the time that Rascal Flats got snubbed in favor of Brad Paisley, and he said that was politics. So, mm. but don't diss Brad Paisley because I love him. But don't anyways, make, uh, Brad Paisley's like, what did I do? You can read about the reunion, Rascal Flats, all that. B105Country.com. Cody Johnson. This is maybe relatable for you, Ken, but he says that in his family, he's the low man on the totem pole. <laughs> That's uh-huh. not why. That's not why relatable, but he says that his family loves Carrie Underwood, Lainey Wilson, and Megan Maroney, and they don't care that he's like a famous star himself. Funny. You know, so thought that was funny. He says that he's actually sick of their music because it's constantly blaring in his house, and he also said he doesn't want them to go into country music because they see the private jets and all that, but they don't see the hard work sure. that goes into it. So um, it's fun because he has a song with Carrie out, you know, a new duet. So... You know, it's funny because I was listening to Jalon Helton's Country Countdown on B105 last Sunday. Mm-hmm. There's a, um, shit, that's a good show. Yeah. But um, they had Justin Moore was talking about why he moved back to Arkansas from Nashville to raise his family. Yeah. And the whole point of it was, is that, you know, all the friends and family in Arkansas think it's cool what he does, yeah. you know, for a living, but they really don't care. Yeah. And he says it's great for his kids to be around that when people treat him like a normal person. Right. So. Well, I was just saying maybe you can relate. Maybe your kids think that this isn't the best station. Well. Maybe they like mix one away better. No, I think, no. I think okay, Jane's, uh, well, I think Jane's got it. Okay. Yeah. Friday edition of the 710 Laugh Off. Here we go. Okay, well, you won yesterday, so you can decide. What do we have for the week? Are we tied? No. Did I win? No, you didn't win. You have two, I have one. So we'll either oh, tie or you're okay. going to win. Um, yeah, Why would it be so sure? I'm going to start. Okay. Lauren, what do you call someone that only makes iced coffees? A uh, barista. That was cute. Barista. I made an extra large one today because it's needed. Okay. Can I used to have trouble sleeping. Now I can do it with my eyes closed. Well, can you? Um, I don't know. My dad sleeps with one eye open, so maybe I really? do as well. He sleeps with his eye. He used to sleep with his eyes open. That then, is crazy. And then I would like think that he was awake and just ignoring me, but he was actually asleep. How can you even do that? I don't know. That's weird. Really, we should have that looked at. I don't know if he still does it, but it is possible. Lauren, why did the computer get... Was it my turn? Yeah. Okay. Lauren, why did the computer get so fat? Accepted too many cookies. Lots of spam. Lots of bites. Some megabytes. Okay, that was really good. Almost laughed. Ken, what did the plant decide to study in college? STEM. You got a lot of the plant jokes lately. I have more. (laughs) Okay. Laura, my girlfriend wouldn't see the last Batman movie with me until we had our eighth restaurant date. So it was dinner, 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 Batman. (laughs) Okay. All right. Ah, Good job. Yeah, I get it. Okay. That was good. You know, I liked your jokes today. Thank you. Because they were all very random and I hadn't heard of any of them before and I like couldn't figure them out. Well, perfect. That's what we're doing. Okay. I'll take the win for the week. Mark it on the calendar. Next week. I get the cash prize from the pool that we started. So (laughs) that's good. Okay. It's very empty right now. Well, you have to pay into it still, but yeah. I have a dollar laying around. And that's better than nothing. It'll work. <laughs> 713 B105. Your brain teaser question up next. And we're going to win some haunted shack tickets. Mm-hmm. All right, I seven, have a Halloween themed question. Oh, perfect. 720 here this morning on B105. B105 Breakfast Club. Ken and Lauren, we got your brain teaser question today. Your chance to win. Uh, also, haunted shack tickets today, right? Yep. You can still have some Papa Murphy's, but. Oh, okay. So, dinner and a. Uh, dinner and a an show, event, I guess, right? if you will. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, Americans spend about $700 million on this collectively every Halloween, which seems high, but I mean, 
I'm a huge fan of this. If I saw this at my front door, I would be really excited. Okay, so Americans spend about seven hundred million on this. Yes. Collectively, cumulatively, uh-huh. whatever you want to say. Every Halloween season, right? Yeah. Are you doing this? Um, Does this? I don't think so, but I guess we could. You still have time. I want you to do this. Well, if you want to buy this, you can do it. Well, okay. For her, you know. But I don't get to really reap the benefits. Maybe like a photo or two, but. Uh, okay, well, I don't know what to do there for you. Yeah. Americans spend $700 million on this collectively every Halloween season. Okay, 727-B105. Call now, and you can win with uh, Papa Murphy's mm-hmm. and the Haunted Shack. Cody Johnson right now. B105 Breakfast Club. Ken and Lauren, here we go. Your brain teaser question today and your chance to win some Haunted Shack tickets, also some Papa Murphy's pizza. Okay, so Americans spend about $700 on this collectively every Halloween season. What is it? 700 million dollars. Mm-hmm. That's a lot. Okay, let's go to the phones. Take some guesses. Hi, what do you think? Morning, Ken. Is it, is it, is it candy? Not candy. Oh, okay. Thanks, Ken. Yeah, Thanks. thank you. Hi, what's your guess? Uh, decorating? Um, not decorating. You're on the right track. Yeah, it's something festive. Mm-hmm. Okay, try again. Okay. Thanks. Hi, what's your guess? Hi, is it a pet costume? Yeah, you got it. Pet costumes, which I would imagine. I love it. Well, I don't know. I guess you can, what, what, cat, dog? I, I think know. any animal you can dress up. Chinchilla? Yes, chicken. <laughs> they can wear a little scarf. <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> What's your name? Tiana. Tiana, you got, you got any pets? I do. Are you going to dress? I have a big black lab. Okay. Is your, well, your big black lab would be easy to dress up for Halloween, don't you think? He has been a cat before, I will admit. Okay. <laughs> Don't you think Ken should dress up his dog? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, she's got a couple handkerchiefs. You know, we could put like a bandana on her or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out. I'll send you pictures. Okay. We'll do yeah, something. Please do. <laughs> okay. Tatiana, we got you all hooked up with Papa Murphy's. You also got some Haunted Shack tickets, okay? Woo, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for playing. And uh, we'll do it again on Monday. Yes, we will. We have more Haunted Shack tickets, too. Are we going to play? Are we, well, we also have that other game. That we're gonna well, try I to... think that on Monday we should play the game, the secret stall. The secret stall. Yeah, because we Noises want. Noises from Lauren's bathroom. We want to really get in the Halloween spirit. It's fun to do it with the brain teaser, but like Monday, I think we need to bring it back. Even Sounds good it, to me. It's too close to home for me, you know? Sounds good to me. Okay. Um, we will. Uh, We'll have coming up for you, too, at 740, just a few minutes, Breakfast Club Confessions. Oh my. I have one just from this morning. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll discuss coming up on uh, B105. <laughs> Breakfast Club Confessions. Ken and Lauren, B105. You want to start, Lauren? Yeah, I'll start. Okay. So, I just want to preface this with, well... I was actually just scared. Right. I was going to say thank you, Ken, for supporting me when I'm chaotic because um, this morning I'm leaving. I'm very tired this morning. And I realized I didn't have my Apple Watch on, which I always have my Apple Watch on because I got to get my steps. Okay. I'm in a step bet. Oh, yeah. A you don't want to miss that. A $40 step bet. Ooh, that's a big I know. one. And so I'm like driving down my street about to get on the interstate and I'm like, I forgot my Apple Watch. And I was like, I could just go to work without it, but then I'm going to be hot lapping when I get home. be running way behind. Yeah, Yeah, and I've been closing my rings. I'm trying to get back into like the swing of things. So I'm like, I got to turn around and get it. So then I was texting you and I was like, hey, forgot my Apple Watch. Had to turn around, be there soon. Well, then I get here and there's like a convention at the holiday. Yeah, it was crazy busy. I have never seen so many people. At this, at that hour, especially. So I like look in the little space where you get in the elevator um, on the third floor. Was jam packed. There's people waiting outside. Oh my gosh! And I'm like, and there's no stairs. So I'm like, okay, well that's not an option. So I'm like, I'll go into the Holiday Inn and take their elevator. And it was the same in there. So I was literally sprinting down the hallway so fast because I, you know when it rains it pours. I should have just known. Had to park way up high. And yeah. yeah, so I just made a fool of myself sprinting through the hallway of the Holiday Center. And, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> well, you know, you're here. You made I'm it. I'm here. You made I it. made it. It's a Friday, and um, it's going to be still a good day. That's what I'm telling myself. I kind of felt like a bad father yesterday. <laughs> yeah, it's not funny, but <laughs> I'm laughing. 
So I've had a very busy week at work. Mm-hmm. Lots of stuff has been going on. Yep. I pick up my daughter from school and she goes, oh, by the way, there's trunk or treat tonight at the school. Oh. And I'm like, okay. Could you have told me this maybe before no. an hour before it happens? Because I already had gone to the grocery store. I got stuff and my plan was it was a beautiful day. I was going to grill some burgers out there, hang on the backyard, just decompress, right? Right. And then all of a sudden, you got this trunk or treat thing that's going to take like two and a half hours. Right. And I was like, I really don't want to go, but I don't want to disappoint her. Well, I had a friend of mine I ended up, uh, him, him and his son were going to go, and I just pawned her off with them. <laughs> That's not that bad. It's not that bad, but well, I just no. I I, I well, I we t- I take their kid all the time too okay. and do stuff. It's not yeah. like we do this a lot. But I was like, oh, here's a here's a solution that you know, because I didn't want to ask my wife to bring her when she gets off work, and I was like busy. I had to cook and all the stuff I had to make. Yeah. you know what I mean. But um, yeah. Yeah. But parents will understand, and every parent knows this. At some point, when your kid tells you last minute about something that they need right away, oh, my gosh. And also, I feel like <laughs> parents probably understand, like, okay, your your friend gets it this time. You'll do it next time. Oh, yeah, definitely. We do, we bring them to all sorts of stuff or, or, or whatever. So it yeah. was okay. It worked out. And then I fed them when they got back anyway. Oh, well, that's perfect. So Good it worked compromise. out. But you buried I, that part in I found, the story. Yeah, I know. Well, I found a way to get out of trunk or treat. Not that it wasn't going to be anything that big, and then then the whole costume thing—it was just, yeah. But it was, but you, you know, I more I talk, the more I'm digging a hole here. So I'm just going to stop. I think you're digging yourself out of the hole. Oh, am I? Yeah, because well, you're like, oh, anywhere. I fed them. Yeah, I fed that them, makes everything okay. I fed them burgers, bacon, yes. bacon cheeseburgers when they got back. That's the first meal I ever had at your house. Throwback. I know, and I still have the burn from the pan. The bacon jumped up. Yeah, and got I me. didn't. I had nothing yeah. to do with that. Lord, Let me just clarify. Me. <laughs> first time we met. No, anyway, uh, seven forty four B one hundred five. I feel better now. I think. Good. I, I don't. Lawrence Country Lowdown on B one hundred five at seven forty seven, and today going to be sixties. Uh, mm-hmm. So nice day. Okay, what what do we got going on? Okay, so much to get to. So Dan and Shay, they announced. The big news that they said that they, you know, been holding in for 10 years. They have a Christmas album and um, it's a double album called It's Officially Christmas 21 Songs, Originals and Classics. And it's actually out now. So they announced it and then they released it. Okay. So a little early songs. for Christmas, but I can see them. You have to put them out now, though, because yeah, that's that's, that's when they do it. Because, I mean, you can't put it out in December. There's not enough time to sell it. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, that's true. I just feel like should we wait till, like, November 1st? But I feel like their voices, because I haven't had time to listen to it just yet, are perfect for, like, Christmas songs. It could be. You know, very we'll soulful. So we have that out today. And then Morgan Wallen has a new song out today called Love Somebody, which is very exciting. He's been teasing this for a long time. He also shared yesterday that he's launching his own music festival called Sand in My Boots Fest. He says he's been working on it for a while, so it's going to be in Gulf Shores, Alabama, May 16th through the 18th. We don't have a lineup or ticketing details yet, but those are coming soon. And then he also made another donation to hurricane victims. He gave, I think, like $500,000 to victims of Hurricane Helene. He went on site of some of the damage and was meeting with people. And now um, he raised enough money throughout the community to uh, give 100,000 meals to those in need. Wow. So he's been doing a lot. Well, that's good. Yeah, a lot. So very, very busy. And then on top of his new music and the new Dan and Shay album, we have Bailey Zimmerman with a new song called Holding On. It's about um, mental health. Dasha has a Christmas song out today. Really? Which one? It's called Driving Home for Christmas. So I think it's an original. It Kit, sounds like it would be. Yeah. yeah. Kit Moore has a new song called um, As I Go. And then Riley Green has a new album out today. Don't Mind If I Do. And then Midland released a deluxe edition of their latest album. Does Riley Green's um, album have the duet that he has L.O. Langley on? So there is a duet with L.O. Langley. They have two of them. One yeah. was on her album and one's on his album, Yep, right? so You Look Like You Love Me is on L.O. Langley's album. Right. And then their most recent duet called Don't Mind If I Do is on Riley's. I think they should be a couple. I think so, too, <laughs> if they're not already. Uh, I'm, oh, I'm spreading some rumors. Love it. Yeah. I'm not trying to spread rumors, but yeah, I just think that they look cute together. They do. Why not? And I love love, so I want them to be in love. <laughs> okay. 
There you go, Lauren's Country Lowdown. <laughs> Thank you, Lauren. 7.50, B105, and we've got uh, some Billy Carrington for you. Do I make you wanna on B105. Let's go to the movies. Let's huh? do it. Lots of good stuff to see right now. Um, you know, if you're in the Halloween um, spirit, they've got uh, Hocus Pocuses out in theaters. Some classic. Other, some other classic Halloween films on there, mm-hmm. too. Um, but this one's out, uh, Smile 2. Did you ever watch the first Smile? Yeah, I did. I think I saw it with your wife and your dad. But I actually texted them both and asked if they wanted to see this. Smile um, 2? Yeah, Smile 2. Okay. In the near future. You're well, welcome to come. Uh, but I just know you don't want to come, so. Well, he's about to live in my basement, so it'll be, you know, he'll be around. Yeah. Well, I'm excited. He loves scary movies like me. Yeah, well, anyway, Smile 2, it's about to embark on a new world tour, global pop sensation, Sky Riley, played by Naomi Scott, experiencing increasingly terrifying, in- inexplicable events. Wow. Overwhelmed by the escalating horrors and the pressures of fame, Sky is forced to take her dark past to regain c- control of her life before it spirals out of control. I don't know what the smile has to do with all that, but okay. Um, it's well, I won't give any spoilers. Well, they show up and they people that are smiling, right? And, and then that's like. Yeah, and. Well, they're coming after her. Yeah, if you see the the smile, then you're next type of a thing. Not uh, everyone sees it. You know what I mean? The marketing is really good because they have people yeah, all I saw, over I saw doing like the baseball smile games and stuff. They yeah. were doing that. Yeah. The other one out is with Michael Keaton and Mila Kunis. It's um, called Good Rich, and it's um, so basically it's getting good reviews. By the way, so is Smile too. That's getting good reviews, early reviews as well. But this one has to do with Michael Keaton. Plays uh, uh, a guy that is, his life is upended when his wife and mother of their nine-year-old twins enters a 90-day rehab program, leaving him on his own with their young kids. Thrust into the world of modern parenthood, Goodrich leads on his daughter from his first marriage, which is played by Mila Kunis. The character's name is Grace. And he ultimately evolves into the father she never had. Aw. That's so cute. Heartwarming, right? That is heartwarming. Yeah, it's a lot of, a lot of people saying very emotional. You know... Michael Keaton may be one of the most underrated actors of our time. He was supposed to win an Oscar for Birdman, and then he had his speech in his pocket because he was supposed to win. I know you, yeah. I know. I think he still can win something. I think he's great. Yeah, he's so so underrated. I, I, yeah, I, I've never seen a role I didn't like him in. I so. know. Well, this has been the Michael Keaton fan club meeting. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't even know I was in his fan club until you brought it up. We'll join here again next week. 808 on The Breakfast Club with Ken and Lauren. And coming up, we are going to have uh, that Jelly Roll code at 820. Uh, fly away to Jacksonville. Be listening next. B105, it's The Breakfast Club with Ken and Lauren. We want you to see Jelly Roll in Jacksonville, Florida. Flyaway yep. trip. Your code is 736. 736. Got yep. it. Enter that one in the app right now for the Jelly Roll Flyaway. 736. Next code coming up at 1020. Zach Brown Band, homegrown on B105. It is a breakfast club with Ken and Lauren. Okay, so here's the story. This happened um, at a restaurant and uh, trying to figure out where it was. Oh, um, in Massachusetts. So, a group of World War II reenactors Oh, no. Dressed in costume, dined at a restaurant. Oh, no. Oh, this no. is near Boston. They're part of the American Heritage Museum World War II reenactment reenactment on Saturday. This is an actual thing that happened. Okay. After the presentation, the group was like, hey, let's go get something to eat. So they went to the Kith and Kin restaurant. Two of the actors were wearing Nazi uniforms. That's bad. Um, The other two were American soldiers, and then there was a nurse in there. Um, There was an incredible backlash against the restaurant because these Nazis were, were these reenactors dressed as Nazis were dining at the restaurant. Yeah, that's hard to tell who's the jerk because obviously they were just doing a job and then they were hungry. I don't think I would wear that in public. Like I'd change. Probably change out of that. Yeah, yeah that would be what I would say. Maybe but then, that wasn't an option. But people are coming at the restaurant. So the restaurant actually had to close because of threats that they received. I mean, I kind of get that too because that is incredibly inappropriate. I wouldn't want to eat somewhere where I saw that. Especially without context, but then even when you get context, it's like that's still a little rough of a look. Right. And one of the people from the American Heritage Museum that puts on this says that the incident was beyond thoughtless by the actors. So they're blaming their own actors for that. And they said that uh, they don't even allow costumes with SS collars, you know, the, the, you know, 
I won't go into the whole Nazi whatever thing, but anyway, um, they said they're only supposed to be displayed on the reenactment battlefield. But anyway, the restaurant had to apologize and had to close because of all the threats against their workers. So, I don't yeah, know. hard to see who's the jerk there. Um, and they said that's a tough. And one. the restaurant said, you know, in hindsight, we should have probably asked them to change. Right. And but it really should be on those people, I would think. I just don't know why you'd want to go out in public in that. Right. Because without context, that looks weird. No kidding. You know, right. so. Okay. Yikes. Not, not, not a Halloween costume recommended by any, no, no, please, please don't. Please don't do that, right? Okay, there you go. Interesting story. I don't know. Lauren, you're going to cheer us up next, okay? Okay. B105. Body like a back road on B105. It's Breakfast Club with Ken and Lauren. Okay, Lauren. Got to cheer us up with something here on Friday. We'll get us feeling good going on the weekend. I don't think there's one person who's not going to be excited about what I'm about to say. Got me Hopefully other needles. places follow suit. Pepsi Company says they're adding more chips to the bags following all of those complaints about shrinkflation recently. No kidding. It's been a problem. Yeah, so last year there was like a scandal, if you will, because people were like, there's not enough chips in these bags and the price is going up, um, but they never lowered the price, things like that. So in a call last week, the CEO said they are going to start adding 20% more chips into the bags. And they also said when you buy like those multi-packs, they're going to add two or three more nice. as a way to add value. This is Good. just amazing. Good. It's just amazing. They should. You know, it is Finally, something a buzz I can, kill. Something, something I can get behind in this election season. <laughs> 100%. It is, like, it is crazy how expensive like chips are went Lord to buy. Pop, lower the price of soda. Yeah. 10 bucks for a 12 pack? That's ridiculous. I went to go get Fritos because I made chili the other day, you know, and oh. it goes good. It's like $5. No, at this one particular store, it was seven something. For Fritos? Yeah, Frito scoops. And I screamed. No. I was like, I, in my heart will not allow this. So I'm no. excited about this, and I think other places should follow suit. I don't Starting know, like, the chip on... companies, but... Okay, so here's what Pepsi has for their chips. Lay's, they pretty much got them all here. Lay's, Doritos, Cheetos, Ruffles, Tostitos, Baked, the Ruffles, Cheetos, Lay's, Baked ones, Sudden Chips, um, Smart Food, you know, like the popcorn. Yeah. Fritos, Frito Variety Packs. They got Funyuns. Holy cow, they got everything. Cracker Jack, Lay's Kettle Cooked. Yeah, uh, even the Santitas, the really cheap tortilla chips you see, they own those too. They it's funny because everything. I know exactly which type you're talking I know. about. I'm it's like, the thin and crispy. One. Yeah. It's $2, right? Yeah. I think so it's this is now. news we could all agree on. And we need something to come together in this yeah. world. This is it. Sorry, I got I yelled about Fritos, but I was Mallory rubber dancing in the country on B105, Northland's number one for new. B105, stick a fork in it. We're done. We are done. For the week. We'll be here this weekend. Uh, I know, but, you know, it's a good, 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 good week. So Monday, what, what, dress what, the part, Ken, because we're going to be on? having a spooky morning because we're going to do haunted shack tickets. We'll play our game, The Secret Stall. Oh, yeah, right. 740. We're going to have Ken Bueller. Noises from the bathroom yeah. next to Lauren. Ken Bueller is going to be in. We're going to talk about oh. our tear in the depot party, but then I'm going to spring some things on him because the depot is also famously haunted. Oh, yeah, there's, there's ghost stories. Um, so dress the part. What am I supposed to dress up as then? Do you have like a pumpkin shirt? Do you have to? Do you really think I'd have a pumpkin shirt? Well, go borrow it. Tony from Mix has one. Yeah, he probably didn't Wear your it. Chewbacca hoodie. Yeah, the sleeve shrunk on that one. So it looks like... <laughs> no, okay. Quite long, right? Okay. okay. We'll figure it out. Nevertheless, it's going to be really fun on okay, Monday. Okay, we'll see you.